Happy evening, everyone. Welcome back to Edu Skills OED Made Easy. Our mission is to make you fall in love with OED. If you're watching this on YouTube, kindly consider subscribing the channel. Give us a thumbs up if you like our work and share the video to your contacts so that we may reach out to many, especially those who are financially struggling to crack OED. This is a platform of the health professionals, by the health professionals, and for the health professionals. So let's support each other and grow together. And you can find all the, the previous live Zoom sessions videos. The links are pro given in the description below. Make sure that you comment in the comment space so that we know what are your challenges and needs so that we will customize our next sessions accordingly. Okay, let me share my screen. You can see the screen, right? Yes, Father. Thanks, Father. Oh, okay, thank you. OET 2.0 occupational English test, subtest writing, and writing key skills. And today we'll be looking into uh, the first body paragraph. And uh, day one was step one to four, selection of case notes and organization of paragraph. Day two was step five, introductory para introduction paragraph, especially referral letter. Day three, step six that is body paragraph one today we'll be dealing with the body paragraph one hope you have attended day one session and day two session or you have watched the video in the edu skills youtube channel if you have if you are not familiar with the step one and uh, tip uh, step one to five you'll not be able to grasp today's session so this is under the presumption that you have at least attended the session or at least watched the video day four will be step seven other paragraphs day five will be step a self-correction criteria uh, at the end of this segment, like day five, we will be teaching you how to correct your letter yourself without any flaw. Okay, this was the uh, step one to four. The video is on the YouTube. You'll have to watch it. And day two, step five, and writing. So these two things are background to this particular video. If you are a newcomer or will be visiting the cha YouTube channel for the first time, Make sure that before you watch this video, you find step one to five in two videos in the same channel. So today is the body paragraph one, purpose expanded. And I'm sure you are uh, familiar with the case notes and you have a hard copy of case note, Jake Thompson. Please, if you have not taken, I'm giving you 30 seconds, just grab it and keep it with you so that you can jot down something on that. You can circle and you can transform the case notes into sentences. This is how I want you to do the practice on every case note it takes time but it, this is how you develop competency so you know this is the first part of uh, the case note jake thompson and you know here the questions are who is the patient and what is his age so the ray line this will be the thing that is to be written in the ray line so you know this is here name jake thompson 56 years in the very very beginning of the outset of the case note so that is the content for your ray line so mr jake thompson comma 56 years old it is years old and or you can write age 56 or even just 56 is accepted but stick on to one format don't worry don't discuss about those things uh just know i gave you an idea because i don't want to put all the three, three things but i gave you an idea just to make sure that you go to one particular format for example Mr. Jake Thompson, 56 years old. That's it. That's what I recommend. The other one could be like Mr. Jake Thompson, aged 56, or Mr. Jake Thompson, 56. All these are accepted. But then I recommend the first one. You fix on that. You write that way. Or you can write the second one, age 56, whichever you want to. But fix on one particular format so that you will have no confusion. Okay. Now the next steps on admission. Now the questions you have to ask is who was admitted? And the answer is Mr. Thompson was admitted. And where was he admitted? And he was admitted to Kansi Hospital uh, or to whichever the facility you can mention as per the case note. The first, fifth one, when did he get admitted? He was admitted two days ago. So how did you come to know two days ago? You know, admission date is 20th December, 2021. Discharge date is 22nd December, 2021. And you are writing this on this particular date. So definitely, you know, he was admitted two days ago. That's how you interpret or transform the case notes into sentences. Okay. So admission date and discharge date, he was admitted two days. So you can say he was admitted two days ago. Now we have to combine these case notes into one sentence. See, Mr. Thompson was admitted plus he was admitted to KMC hospital becomes one sentence. Mr. Thompson was admitted to KMC hospital. Now we'll have to add one more. The other answer, he was admitted two days ago. So what do you do? Mr. Thompson was admitted to KMC hospital two days ago. 
So all these three sentences combined into one sing single sentence. This is how, especially the beginners, I don't mind others also doing it, but definitely the beginners will have to start with the small, simple sentences. First step is to ask questions about your case notes. Maybe you can take these are the questions. I have more than 20 questions on this case note, which gives you all the details or which tells you where to focus on the case note. So this one is now part one. This is to second question. And this is the third question. So you have a truck moving with these one sentence from three aspects, three aspects of the case note. Okay. Coming to the next question, beautiful questions. Why did he get admitted? So these are the common questions that you ask when you know somebody is admitted. These are the simple questions that you ask. Normally, a man will ask these questions. So ask yourself these questions. He was admitted due to swelling and fluid buildup in his right knee. How did it happen? What was the cause for it? So this was the result of a total knee replacement surgery. This fluid swelling and fluid buildup was a result of a total knee replacement surgery. And when did, did he undergo a total knee replacement surgery? He underwent a total knee replacement surgery on 10, 12, 19. All these are the common questions a layman will ask. Why did he undergo a total knee surgery, replacement surgery? Uh, he underwent a total knee replacement surgery due to osteoarthritis. Now, you may think when I asked you to organize the paragraph, it has gone to the second paragraph. Why did it come to the para first paragraph? That I'll show you to show you a different type of sentence structure where if you are targeting more than 450 grade A or A plus, uh, how you can build up. That's why osteoarthritis, I have clubbed here. There are different options. You can even uh, put it in the end of the second paragraph, second body paragraph. That's it's also fine. But then I'm giving you how you can adopt the letter, the how the key aspect, the flexibility aspect works. So transform the sentences into compound and complex sentences. Now you see admission again, I'm taking the same sentences. Mr. Thompson was admitted. He was admitted to KMC hospital. He was admitted two days ago. We said Mr. Thompson was admitted to KMC hospital two days ago. Now he was admitted due to swelling and fluid built up in his right knee and seventh one. This was the result of a total knee replacement surgery. So all these together, he was admitted with swelling and fluid build up in his right knee the result of a total knee replacement surgery. These two sentences together, we construct it into one particular sentence, one sentence. So here, you know, whatever I have striked out are the repetitions in the sentences. So when you construct next sentence or when you combine the sentences, you don't have to use the repetitions. And now the next answer is he underwent a total knee replacement surgery on 10, 12, 19. So he underwent a total knee replacement surgery due to osteoarthritis. How do you combine it? He underwent a total knee replacement surgery on 10, 12, 19 due to osteoarthritis. What was the cause? Uh, you can see here what the connectives he was admitted with swelling and result of, and I have put a yellow mark here, build up, don't put a space over there. When you're right hand writing it, it's not a big matter, but then there is no space between U and D, those uh, like between these build and up, no space, only this hyphen. When you have a handwritten um, essay, it doesn't matter. So hope you are following me. These three sentences into one sentence, six, seven into two sentences into one sentence, eight, nine into one sentence. Now, Mr. Thompson was admitted to KMC hospital two days ago. You know, you have combined three sentences, one sentence. And next, now we are going to add this one. He was admitted with swelling and fluid buildup in his right knee, the result of a total knee replacement surgery. So we will be omitting this. He was admitted because Mr. Thompson was admitted. There is a repetition. And combining these two, we have Mr. Thompson was admitted to KMC Hospital two days ago with swelling and fluid buildup in his right knee, the result of a total knee replacement surgery. Okay, then coming to the next one. Now, this is the sentence we have already constructed with so many questions, more than nine questions. Mr. Thompson was admitted to KMC Hospital two days ago with swelling and fluid buildup in his right knee, the result of a total knee replacement surgery. Now, we have to add one more thing. What I want to construct, uh, two more things we'll be adding to this. He underwent a total knee replacement surgery on 10, 12, 19. But here we are omitting a total knee replacement surgery, which is here, already here in this sentence. So we'll be clubbing these two things, uh, this big sentence and this one small aspect into that sentence. Mr. Thompson was admitted to KMC Hospital two days ago with swelling and fluid buildup in his right knee. The result of a total re replacement surgery which he underwent on 10, 12, 19. Now, this is the sentence we have. As far as we have constructed, combining all the answers of all those questions, 
Now we'll be adding one more thing. He underwent a total knee re replacement surgery due to osteoarthritis. So I'm just adding one more aspect to show you how you can club the sentences. So the result you have, Mr. Thompson was admitted to KMC hospital two days ago with swelling and fluid buildup in his right knee, comma, the result of a total knee replacement surgery, which he underwent on 10, 12, 19 due to osteoarthritis. This is a sentence uh, which can get you A plus grade. So we'll come back to that if you need to visit uh, again. And now the next thing is, I just wanted to show highlight these connections. Mr. Thompson was admitted to KMC hospital two days ago, never write digit two, okay? Write T-W-O, but there are a lot of uh, misgivings on those things. Uh, definitely as per the general rule of English, till one to nine, you are supposed to write the uh, word, not the digit, two, W O two days ago. So two days ago, with swelling and fluid buildup in his right knee, the proposition with used here. And next is the cause, the result of a total knee replacement surgery. If you know cause and effect language, I have explained umpteen times. So you can remember that. Which is the connective word he underwent on 10, 12, 19. Again, cause, what was the cause? Due to osteoarthritis. Okay, this is a beautiful sentence. And ultimately, you have this sentence to write in your first body paragraph, the first sentence. So you are following me. Next sentence. In the first body paragraph, what is the next sentence? Again, we have the same case notes. What is the impact of pain and swelling is our next question. And the pain and swelling have limited his mobility. Impact of pain and swelling. His self-care activities have been compromised. You know, these things are given here. Moderate swelling of right knee with fluid buildup, impaired mobility and self-care activities. So this is very important. This is the focus of the letter because we are writing it to a physiotherapist and that's the main focus. That's why we have constructed this one particular bullet point into two sentences. The pain and swelling have limited his mobility. His self-care activities have been compromised. We'll be combining it this. So the pain and swelling have severely limited his mobility. His self-care activities have been significantly compromised. We combine these two sentences and make a beautiful sentence. The resulting pain and swelling have severely limited his mobility. Consequently, his self-care activities have been significantly compromised. These are the two things which you need to clearly convey to the physiotherapist for the coming care or the ongoing care that he needs to give to the patient. So that's very, very important. So we have this particular paragraph. Here. Mr. Thompson was admitted to KMC hospital two days ago, swelling and fluid build up at up his right knee coma, the result of a total knee replacement surgery, which he underwent on 10 slash 12 slash 2009 due to osteoarthritis. The resulting pain and swelling have severely limited his mobility. Consequently, his self-care activities have been significantly compromised. Okay, there is a mistake here. Build up. There should be a hyphen. Okay, build up. That's why we said you should have time to proofread the letter. So you find out such mistakes uh, and correct them. So this is the beautiful body paragraph, first body paragraph that can give you a 450 plus. Para. So para purpose expanded. This is purpose expanded. What was the purpose? Mr. Thompson requires your professional assistance for his ongoing difficulties with mobility following recent surgery. This was the purpose paragraph, interrogatory paragraph that we formulated. This is the next, the purpose expanded, where we speak of, you have this taste of uh, the main issues here, no? mobility and other things, definitely highlighted here and explained here why the mobility issue, how it happened. All those things are beautifully explained in two sentences. One is a great sentence, second one, and you have third and second and third sentence, small sentences. So you have three sentences into a beautiful paragraph. And next paragraph, you know, what happened during hospitalization. And now the further paragraph, how is his condition now? Next thing will be, how is condition now? And last paragraph will be request assistance or recommendation paragraph. That's it, the beautiful thing. So that let's correct this one. Then you go back. So this is proofreading and correcting. Okay, build up. I feel bad to go so uh, simple, but then uh, sometimes I feel definitely beginners require that. So you have to thank Nisha Vinu. This is this was on our request. And whenever admins or uh, support group people that request me, I have seen that the request is uh, granted because they are supporting the platform. 
have never said no to anyone so far because we respect their service, their time that they spend for others. She has spent a lot of time even to collect your names and arrange, organize all those things. Yes. Thank you so much, Father. And actually, we all are waiting for this writing session. With the next session, we'll be completing the whole thing. In the last session, I'll be giving you exactly the criteria. With those criteria, you can correct any of your letters without anyone's assistance. You can correct with the 99% accuracy that I am sure. Provided you have gone through these steps, you have practiced these steps. Otherwise, you will not be able to. And I'll give you clear criteria what you have to look into. Flexibility is the key. You can write in any way, but then the message will be clear. Now, I wanted to show you that first sentence, A plus grade sentence. Definitely, they will give you more than A plus because that has got all the criteria of English and all the main aspects and whatever is to be included soon after the purpose paragraph. So with that, almost like we combined nine sentences or 10 sentences to one sentence with all the grammatical things, proposition, connective word, and cause and effect language. Everything was built up into that one part. Now, if you find it difficult, don't write such a long sentence. You know, I have shown you different types of sentences. There, Maybe you can make uh, that one sentence into three sentences or two sentences. So you have five sentences in a paragraph. So the question in the platform sometimes how many sentences should be there in the first one paragraph is not relevant at all. See, it can be this one particular first sentence could be made into two or three sentences. So it depends. Whatever it is, purpose should be expanded. It depends on each case note and to whom you are writing, why you are writing, all those things. So the thing is like, that's why I said don't take the templates. Like if you keep something on mind, okay, this is... Definitely, this should be written the first paragraph. Next case note may not require that. Something else will be required. Now, I wanted to teach you a method which is entirely different. The first thing is to ask these questions to the case notes. Try to write down the questions. Second, try to answer those uh, questions in full sentences. See, to explain, I would have written in one word or a phrase, right? But I have written full sentences. That's how you gain real competency. 